You're gonna be a great principal. This is what I've been waiting for. May not be the ideal school to start, though. It's the way I want to be. Woman, watch how the hell you drive. Yeah? done nothing while we go because I'm the principal and I don't know where it is what's your name son Robert Norris like this one <laughs> Secretary. Welcome to Washington. Here's your first offering. That's no way to handle a student here. Oh, really? Well, maybe when you've been here as long as I have, your attitude will change. Uh, young man, would you have a seat over there? I think you and I have a lot to talk about, Mr. Proctor. Ben Proctor. Mr. Proctor, but I think the proper time would be at a staff meeting. I'd like to see my office now? Oh, it's right over there, Mr. McKenna. Mr. Proctor. Mr. McKenna. Well, what do you think of it? Well, I've seen his kind come and go. Uh, thank you, honey, but I know the way to the door. But, oh, uh, wait! Mr. McKenna, I'm Margaret Wright, president of the Parents Community Action Committee. I got you hired, and I can get you fired. Oh, I know who you are, Mrs. Wright. Why don't you have a seat? We asked for a black principal because we thought he would be better for the school. Parents don't want to send their kids here. They'd rather bust them to other schools because we've got a school that's gone bad. We have got to improve, not move. If you can do that, you've got a long-term job. Well, what do you think? Oh, I intend to be here for quite a while, Mrs. Wright. Not if some big changes aren't made. I grew up in New Orleans. 
The school I went to was so old, so worn down, it makes this place look like a palace. It's my mother here. She was a principal for 25 years, best teacher I ever knew. But the reason this school worked was because she made sure she had teachers that wanted the students to learn. But what you've got here are a lot of leftovers. Nobody else wants them. This is where they end up. Yeah, well, if they're bad, we'll get rid of them, but everybody gets a fair chance. Can I count on your help? That's why I'm here, Mr. McKinney. Gangs are gonna be your biggest problem. They beat up on the new members before they take them in. Things are gonna change around here. Well, I'm a Missouri girl. You gotta show me. Uh, come with me. I may need your help. Who are you? New principal. I'm with you. I think. Come on, man. Take it like that. You wanna be a brown? Yeah, come on, Josh. Messing around. Tell him, homeboy. It's cool, man. No, it's not cool. Let me see that eye. I said it's all right. Now, listen, I'm going to tell you all one time and one time only. What you do off campus is your business. But this is a school, and gang rule does not work here. Without a doubt, man, whatever you say. <laughs> All right, break it up. Let's go. Let's go, everybody. Break it up. Okay, uh, that was Ethan Jackson, EJ, and those are the Brims. Uh, you might notice we have a little gang problem here. We have the uh, Bloods, the Royals, the Crips. Right, right. 62's Raymond's. I know, I know, I know. I'm Alan Kemper. How you doing, George McKenna? Thanks for your help. Look, why isn't there a teacher on duty here? Why's up limits? To teachers? I've written law. No man's land. <laughs> well, where else do the kids room? Well, let's see. We got the uh, stairwells, student restrooms, the hall, hallways, the auditorium. The roof. That doesn't leave much else, does it? You got it. <laughs> the Patriot forces, under the command of General George Washington, had been retreating for nearly six months. The British general, Cromwell, noted in his Miguel. letters to his family in England, he the Red Indians of the colonies would can't just sleep the all the time. Sure, so I'm working in on it. To the rules and laws that were being proposed in the document called the Declaration of Independence. The Patriot cause Norris, so for Pete's sake, pick up the book and stay away. Sir William Howe considered the campaign of 1776 over by mid-December. But General Washington decided to risk a surprise attack across the Delaware at Trenton, New Jersey. I ain't watching that the film again, man. was a tremendous gamble on Washington. And George Washington crossed the Delaware. Da, 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 da. Oh, man, I'm good. Sit down immediately. Man, I seen this flick when I was in the fourth grade, the fifth and the sixth. Twice last term, three times this year. It's mine. I know everything in it. Fred, turn off the machine. It's not my problem that you've had to see this so many times. But a great many of my students have not seen it, so I would appreciate it if you would sit down. Where do you think you're going? I asked you a question, young man. Where do you think you're going? Hey, watch it! Hey, hold it now. Because if you hit me... Stick your finger in my face. <laughs> Son, you threatened a teacher. Now, what do you expect me to do? Make believe nothing happened? Showing an old movie ain't teaching. Well, then you come to me. That's what I'm here for. Now, I'll talk to Mr. Gooden. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna be just like the rest of them. Son, don't lay that humble on me. I'm jiving you. Yes, you are. Now, you're suspended for two days for threatening a teacher. There's no excuse for that. My mama's gonna kill me. Well, then you'll think twice about it next time, won't you? That's all. Kelly, how's that eye? Sorry. 
What grade are you in, son? Eleven. You want to go to college? Well, what you gonna do after you graduate? Why'd you join a gang, Kelly? Oh, come on now. You may not want to tell me, but I know that you know. Well, I don't want to tell you. All right. You know what I think? I think that deep down in your heart, you don't want to be in a gang. I think that you want to go to class every day. All right. My grades ain't gonna get no better. Yes, they will, because I'll help you. But I don't want you to help. What are you so afraid of? I'm scared of nothing. Oh, I see. You have to be a failure in order to be in a gang? No. Then why don't you try? Because. Because what? Because I can't breathe. All right? All right. That's all right. We can change that. Well, I don't want to. All right? So let's just leave it like that. You know what's going on with these lights? Power's going hey, on. Hey, girl, what's happening? Happens all the time. Must have been rough for you. No, no. Other than a fire and a gang initiation. <laughs> <laughs> Piece of cake. What are you going to do? Resign. What? Going back in there in the morning. It's tougher than you thought, huh? Yeah. This place is a real mess. Some of the teachers are hostile. They don't want to teach. Kids are turned off into gangs. Parents are angry at everybody. My mother used to tell me that we owe our kids an education, that they're blank pages for us to write on. Well, I got volumes of blank pages. You're gonna do great. Sure. Besides, how could they resist you? Well, if I'm so irresistible, why are you sitting way over there? I was waiting for you to get all that school stuff out of your head. Oh. Well, it's, uh... They're basically innocent. They hire no teachers, publish no textbooks, select no principles. They have nothing to say about what they are taught. The responsibility is ours. Only 20% of our graduates continue into educational programs. The absentee rate is 30% on a daily basis. The students cannot learn if they are not here. The failure and dropout rates are unbearable. We need a homeroom period each morning to check them into school and to monitor attendance. What it means is that the teacher will be responsible for the individual needs of each child. Now, these kids need parents away from home. 
I'm a teacher. I'm paid to teach. I'm not paid to be a parent. Man, we live with violence every day in this school. What makes you think your plan's gonna have any effect on that? Yeah, we're not policemen. You know, we're not trained for combat duty. Most of these kids have lost their desire to learn. You dream it if you think you're gonna make these kids respond to a homeroom plan or anything else. If they were your kids, would you give up on them? No, they're not my kids. You want me to make time on my schedule for a homeroom? I don't have enough time as it is. No, I'm asking you to make better use of the time that you have. That's all. Now, look, I understand you've all had a bad time here. I'm the new kid on the block. I understand that. But I'd like to try. Oh, I see. You've already given up. Huh? You just collect your paychecks, stay loose, and don't get involved. Huh? Mr. McKenna, what have you got in mind? Okay. Okay, number one, homework, mandatory. Right? Weekly lesson plans to establish continuity, and we stick to them. Number two, classrooms open to the parents. This school is in our private domain. We invite them in, sort of a show and tell. See what they have in mind. Number three, first time a student is absent, we call home. Nail them right in the beginning. Number four, we'll have a dress code. That's right, a dress code. Students should look like students. Teachers should look like teachers. Uh, what do you think this is, Harvard Prep School? It can be. Yes. Yes, it can be. It's up to us, you and me. We make the difference. When a school works, look to the paid professionals. When it doesn't work, How you doing? All right. Good, good. Listen, where are you going that's so important that you have to wear those rollers in your hair here, now at school? Uh, going on no place, for sure. Well, perhaps you might try wearing them after school from now on, all right? Okay. Have a good day. Son. Uh, yeah, well, the door was open, so I just thought I'd come in. Why, what's the problem? No problem. Just from now on, during school hours, you're not allowed in the gym unless you're assigned, all right? All right. But since you're in here, you want to go a little? Say what? <laughs> One-on-one, -on -one, you and me. You and me? Yeah, you and me. I tell you what, I'll even make it interesting for you. If you win, I won't give you any more grief. Nothing. Not I. If I win, you agree to come to my office and I'll help you with your reading. Uh-huh. Either way, you win. You want to play or not? Let's go. All right.
Shot. Couldn't make that again if my life depended on See you in my office in the morning. Right? Cutting. I gotta get home. Cynthia. Yeah? I've been waiting for you to come by my office. Uh, homework, Mr. McCann. I just haven't had time. Oh, well, good. I'm glad to hear that's the reason why. I wanted to talk to some of the honor students about helping me start a remedial reading program. I will, but right now I'm late for that. Look, Miss McKenna, I didn't come see you because... Because what? Well, because what does it matter anyway? Nobody listens to us. That's not true. I'll listen to you. I don't think so. Try me. Why'd you come down so hard on Robert Norris? Let me see. Robert was out of line. He was wrong. Students cannot threaten teachers. It's as simple as that. I had no choice. Robert is one of the few students who wants to learn. Excuse me, I don't want to be late. Excuse me. Excuse me, how you doing? I'm George McKenna. I'm principal here at Washington High. What school do you go to? Lincoln School in the Valley. Oh, you like it? It's hard, but I'm doing OK. Wouldn't you rather go here to Washington High? No way. Uh, excuse me. How you doing? I'm George McKenna. I'm principal here at Washington High. You think this long bus ride is worth it? We're boiling now. We're freezing the winter. And I hate getting home in the dark. Well, wouldn't you rather go here to Washington High? No, man. I'd rather ride the bus. Besides, who wants to go to school with them? How you doing? I'd like to talk to you about painting your wall out there. What you gonna paint on it? <laughs> Nothing. Uh, we want to paint over all that stuff. It won't do me no good. Them gangs and school kids just come right on back over here and mark it all up again. Well, I'll see to it that they don't. Who are you? I'm George McKenna. I'm principal of Washington High School. <laughs> well, I wish you luck, Mr. McKenna. But you fooling yourself. Hell, there's a bunch of them out there now. Well, no, that, that's my gang. That's the school football team. How about it? Thank you. OK, boys.
We gonna paint this wall. I ain't painting that wall. That's the Brim's wall. No, that wall belongs to this house and that woman that lives inside. Now, messing it up means you got no respect for yourself or your community. Painting it clean means you got some pride in where you live. Now, if you men got any pride, then you come on over here and help me. The rest of you, shame on you. Feel good. That's all right. Maybe they'll come and help us. <laughs> nice paint job. I know the paint job wasn't the greatest. Well, it's an eye for an eye. That's what's going on here, Mr. McKenna. You slop paint on their walls, they decorate your wheels. Well, they better buy a lot of paint. You know, they're gonna keep writing on that wall. It's like their daily dirty word. And this paintbrush is like my eraser.
Vicente here. Cynthia. I appreciate you sending me that note. Sorry to hear you're transferring out of school. Can I talk you out of it? No, because I can't stand it here. I'm scared to come to school here now. Well, I've lost most of my high achievers, my straight-A students to the valley because of selective busing. We need good students here, and you're one of them. I'm sorry, Mr. McKenna. I want to make something of myself and go to college. I can't do that if I stay here. I can't sleep. I don't laugh anymore. How can I concentrate if I'm not even safe in class? I keep seeing Kelly laying there dead. I can't even concentrate on the work I'm supposed to be doing. Don't you see? I gotta go. I promise you there'll be no more violence in the school. You can't make that promise. If I have to change the whole community, I will. I wish I could believe you, Mr. McKenna. I'm sorry. Dice are not allowed in school. Neither are guns or knives. Any student found with any weapon will be gone. Now get to class. Not you, EJ. I want to talk to you. Let's go. Who killed Kelly, E.J.? I don't know. Don't tell me you don't know, son. You were there. Don't you want to kill her to go to jail? Don't you care that your friend is dead? Now, who killed Kelly? Man, what difference do it make? Everybody on the street know who killed Kelly. But ain't nobody saw him pull the trigger. Even if they did, they ain't gonna tell the cops. So if I tell you, they arrest him, then what? Then he'll be tried for murder. Man, ain't nobody gonna testify. He'll be back on the street. You see what I'm saying? We're gonna get him our way. And we ain't gonna never be back on the street again. We don't kill each other, EJ. You don't? Your jail got a death row. So do we. Poor attendance is still our biggest problem. We can't teach these kids if they're not in school, and they won't come unless we make it obvious that we really want them there in the first place. And this homeroom project will be a perfect way to start. There you go. Now, what I need you guys to do is volunteer. If I can get the three of you to prove that this project will work, maybe some of the other teachers will come around. Okay. I'm all for your homeroom thing, George. Whatever we can do to keep them from ditching class. Well, is that the main function? It's a good question. See, it'll also act as a counseling office. Give a kid a chance to talk one-on-one -on -one with a teacher and other students. Let me get this straight. If we're to take attendance, plus account for every student on a daily basis, plus act as some sort of counselors? You got it. And if we're successful with this pilot program? We present it to the entire faculty. Works for me. Well, how about it? Are you with me? Oh, all right. I'm in. But with deep reservations. Me too. Good. Good. All right. Good night. Good night, Linda. Good night, Judge. Hey, thanks for the ginger ale. Yeah. You know there's going to be a lot of resistance from some of the teachers. Yeah, I can think of a few in particular. See you tomorrow. All right.
can't come to the phone right now, but please leave me a message in the tone. Uh, this is George. Um, look, I'm sorry. Uh, the meeting ran a little late. I'll make it up to you, I promise. Um, call me when you get this message. When the bell rings, then you move on to your first period class. How long is this going to last? Well, hopefully a long time. Well, that's my daddy, Mr. McKenna. I probably got some books. All right. Um, Mr. McKenna, do I go to first period first or homeroom first? Didn't I tell you not to go to school today? Now, I get in the truck. Don't you tell me what I can do that thing, do it. Mr. Rogers, can we talk about this? Talk about what? About your son leaving the school. Now, I'm the principal here. When I need him to come and work with me, he comes. No student leaves this campus without being properly signed out. He's mine. Don't need to. Now, you do at this school. Now, that's the law. I'm going. I'm going because I don't want to hurt you. This is a good idea, sir. All right, that's it. Break it up now. Everybody get on to class. Let's go. Move, 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 move. <laughs> I passed out so many flyers, it looks like V.E. Day. This is gonna work. Oh. I know it will. It's about time, too. Everything I've been preaching to you is gonna become concrete tonight. A contract. Simple, easy, direct. Formally written down agreement between parents, teachers, and the school. Everybody pulling together. I sure hope we have enough seats. The community is the absolute base of, no, not of, the community is the absolute base for. George, relax. Yeah. You look beautiful. I'm a lucky man to have you in my life. Look, I know I've been impossible the last few weeks, but be patient with me, okay? I'm trying. You still love me? I love you. George, we have to be to Washington High in 10 minutes. Okay, 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 okay. Oh. Let's go, let's go. You ready? I'm ready. All right, I'll put my shoes and socks on in the car. All right. All right. Uh, you see my keys, honey? They're in your pocket. Thank you for coming. Hope to see you again soon. Like I said, we're planning big things for this school. And your children. Remember, this is your school. I guess that's it. We support the school as local residents. But as far as our children attending here, it's too unsafe. I understand, but realize your kids don't have to move to improve. McKenna. Sorry. I thought more would have shown up. Next time we'll have a full house. Honey, it ain't easy climbing big hills. I know. Are you okay? Can I do anything to help? 
Yeah, you could wake up this community. I'm just... Just trying to give these kids some hope. I don't know, maybe the parents are right. There were 16 people in there tonight. I don't understand. I mean, what in the hell does it take? Time. Yeah, well, these kids don't have time. Honey, don't be so idealistic. This isn't gonna happen overnight. You gotta be patient. You're doing everything you can. Well, it's not enough. Look, I just need time to be alone. Why are you doing this? You don't need me when things are going bad. You don't need me when they're going great. I want to be a part of your life. I just need time to sort things out. Mother never could cook a decent gumbo. Mom, the food was delicious. <laughs> of course it was. The next thing you know, he'd be complaining about my housekeeping. Well, all he has to do is look around the house. It's good to be home. If he ever stopped teasing me, I think he wasn't in love with me. Love. That solves all problems. <laughs> Not all of them. Not yet. Enough of that, poor me, George. Get your tie and jacket. We're going for a walk. My well, tie and jacket's going to make me feel better? Well, maybe not. But I know it'll make you look better. <laughs> hmm. Now, you could have been a doctor like your brothers. Or a lawyer, engineer, anything you wanted to. You decided to be a teacher. Why? Because when I point in any direction, all those children will follow me eventually. So what's the problem? Did I follow them fast enough? See, listen, I'm changing my entire schedule for the day, all right? But you can't. You've got a disciplinary hearing. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Cancel them. Look, I want the student council representatives from each grade in my office in Pronto and tell uh, Robert Norris I want to see him. Watch out, Washington. Fire the burning again. George McKenna's office. Make a list of uh, teachers to be interviewed. Could you hold on, please? Fire, fire, fire. We are family. Pin it on. All right. We are family. Here, McKenna, what have you done Pin it here? On. A new motto, you like it? You do realize that these are the brims and crips colors. Mm -hmm. You bought yourself a lot of trouble with these two colors. You're going to attract every gang termite in the world. <laughs> young men and young women. Okay, I'll see you later. Okay, okay, take care. Okay, take this is your neighborhood. This is your school. What do you think? You need not get on the bus and leave because you're afraid. 
You run away from us, you're running away from yourself. And we all suffer. This is a family here. And you're a part of that family. Our new motto here is we are family. And that means you. So read the pamphlets we've given you. See all the new and wonderful things that we have to offer here. And come home. Have a good day in school. And thank you. This is Miss Aura Kruger, drama and English. Hello. Hello. Why you want me here? You're gonna pick who you want anyway. I want you to be a part of the process. What for? Because your opinion counts. I have one question. Are you afraid of our children? I'm not afraid of our children. Uh, excuse me. How would you handle problem readers and slow learners? Give them the time they deserve. I told you before, EJ. I told you, man, I just need a little more time. Time is running out. Hey, 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 hey. Would you get off this campus, please? I want my money, man. What's it about now, EJ? I don't know, man. I want to see you in my office later. And it's still Mr. McKenna. You know how to teach, or are you going to just show old movies? I think I know how to teach. Are you going to teach black or white? I'm not going to teach either. Oh, I'd teach the rainbow if I could, but I'll settle for students I can reach. I think it's a teacher's job to open the doors of the mind, and it's one that gives me great pleasure, because it's what I want to do. And no one I know can do it better. Mr. McKenna is the reason I'm here. Miss Kruger, I know that I speak for all of us. Welcome to Washington High. Oh, uh, Mr. McKenna. We need to talk to you. About what? Um, we've got too much work to handle. We have five hours of homework. Two and a half hours spent on phone calls to parents. And then we teach five hours. I mean, our day is getting out of hand. Maybe you can work around the clock, Mr. McKenna. I can. After all, I do have a personal life. Oh, damn it. Make the phone calls now. If this homeroom thing doesn't work, this school is down to twos, OK? Can you imagine if he didn't like us? Yeah, wait up. Wait up. I'm going to have to figure out a way how we can get together. I don't see why. Because I'm about teaching, and Washington is soon going to be about learning. And students have got to start performing instead of just uh, sliding by. I think you're a slider. Now, you can't say you didn't know, because I just told you. I don't quite understand it. No, he just hasn't realized yet that they're never going to quit. Well, it doesn't look like he is either. No, he will, just as soon as the school board reviews your document. Listen, Bill, we were doing our jobs before he got here. We'll be doing them long after he's gone. We don't need him or his theories. All we need is students willing to learn. But you know that's never going to happen in this school. Well, Benjamin, <laughs> at least it'll all be over soon. I know, I know, although our numbers have been reduced, we are still a force to be reckoned with, especially now that Neil Goodman has filed a grievance against McKenna with the school board. On what grounds? 
that you forced him to falsify attendance records? Now, you know that's not true. Mr. Goodman, are you a part of this? Keeping the student rolls full keeps the money coming in, doesn't it? You know, this constant agitating is getting to be ridiculous. You know I haven't done anything, and yet you continue to agitate. If you're so unhappy here at Washington, maybe you should be teaching somewhere else. It's not the issue, and you know it. Ladies, gentlemen, the issue is following proper procedure. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get on to our next class. McKenna! Ah, oh, but isn't the messenger of doom? He's off, George. I'm just a simple toiler in the Board of Education vineyard. Otherwise known as Mr. Hatchet. George, 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 you've got to take more kindly to your fellow workers. There are established procedures for getting these problems solved. These people have rights, too, you know. Specifically some of my teachers. But these teachers are used to having I'll more freedom. At all. More freedom in doing what it is they want to do. There's some rumblings boiling up to the ears of my superior. Look, just get to the point. You see, that's your problem. You're too impatient. The system does not take kindly to being rushed. Look, I'm in a hurry. If this is the ax, let me hear it straight out, all right? My superiors believe that the charges leveled against you by a group of your teachers cannot be fully supported by the evidence presented. But? But the discontent displayed by your teachers indicates a real problem at Washington High. And? You're clear, for now. Take this as a warning. I've been charged with closely monitoring your activities, and if I see any, let me underline that, any impropriety at all, you're going to bust me. Exactly. Well, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Delroy, there's some trouble I want to get into. Thanks for the visit. We will get you to college if you want to go. <clears throat> now, what you have in your hands is an agreement between you and the school, kind of a contract. What it states is that we here at George Washington High School will aspire to achieve excellence in our conduct. You will be asked to sign it, and so will your parents because we want the whole community to take part in what Washington High does. So we want your parents to join us, and they will. Now, as for you students, we will have a dress code. Starting tomorrow, no scarves or handkerchiefs will be worn at school. No combs, curlers, or picks will be allowed in the hairs of boys or girls. No earrings will be allowed on boys and all shirt tails must be tucked in. Now this dress code will reflect the pride that we have in ourselves as young men and young women. Put five on the board, write it down. Here come another one. Another one. Get on with it. Get on with it. Come on, you got to write faster than that homeboy. Yo, uh, hey man. You looking for someone? Yeah, I'm looking for Ethan Jackson. What you got on the board, man? What you got on the I'm board? George McKenna. I'm principal of Washington High School. Actually, I'm looking for EJ's parents. Go on the right there. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Mama's at work, but his daddy's home. <laughs> and he ain't in there, though. What you looking at it? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, what can I do for you? <laughs> well, we're making some changes at Washington. Um, this is the contract. We're trying to get the parents to sign it, show their approval, their support for these changes. Mm -hmm. Things like establishing a dress code, uh, boosting their school attendance, <laughs> get rid of gang violence. On <laughs> hey, hey, man, that's all right, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, where you want me to sign, man? Yeah, you know, you know, man, I, I be telling him to stay away from them gangs, man, but uh, you don't listen to me. <laughs> yeah, but more power to you, brother. You know, we need more good brothers like yourself, you know, because the white man don't care nothing about our schools. Ain't that right? right Ain't that right? right you hear me yeah. what I'm saying, right? Yeah. 
<laughs> well, it really is our responsibility. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ain't never lied. I want to see some action here now. Come on, play up. Get on with that. Get that one. Mm. <laughs> I got your money in my pocket today. Hey, hey all right. Yeah, yeah, good luck to you, bro, now. Good luck to you. Oh, ten. Okay, we got ten. Oh, come on, get down on that one. I got everybody's money in my pocket today. I want you to know that. I got your money today. Come on, now. Yeah. Hey, man. Hey, man. Pass me the bill over there, man. I'm all out. Pass me the bill, all right? Still here? Yeah. What is it? Come with me. Oh. We have over a hundred contracts on. I think it's a good start. Good start. I think it's a great start. I was chased by a German shepherd, fell over a fence, kicked off a porch. Never enjoyed it more in my life. <laughs> Mr. McKenna? Mr. McKenna? I, I just want to thank you what you said at the assembly. Oh, thank you very much. You think maybe I could get a scholarship if... If you work hard? Of course you can. What do you want to study? Medicine. Oh, good. Very good. Come on, hop in. I'll give you a lift home. We can talk about it on the way. What kind of doctor you want to be? Family doctor. I like that. I like that. Yeah, you could uh, help a lot in that way. See you tomorrow, Mr. McKenna. I walk into the door. No, no, that's okay, Mr. McKenna. No, I'd like McKenna. to meet your folks. What's wrong, son? I don't live in that house. Well, where do you live? I don't think you like my house. Try me. You live in that car? Where's your folks? My mother's in Mexico. Your father? He's dead. You have no relatives? I used to, not anymore. You're an illegal? Yeah. I walked over the border when I was 11. How do you live, Miguel? What do you do for food, for money? I have a job, after school and on the weekends. Mr. McKenna? 
Don't tell anyone. Please? No. Come on, let's, um... Let's go get your things. Okay, I read Shakespeare. And you were wonderful, Robert. You're a true talent. Bet was, I read, you do ten push-ups. <laughs> well, so it was. Eventually, I'll do the rest. Just like eventually, you'll come to appreciate Shakespeare. You uh, go on down the hall and watch. Right. How you doing? I'm sorry. What can I say? E.J. had a little trouble on the streets. He can't go home for a few days, and he could get killed if he doesn't. Look, you can't take care of all the kids at Washington High George. You're not their father. Huh. Manual's knife. The extra pair of socks you got from Leroy. And where's that? Oh, here it is. Bradley's fighting down his spike wristband, and oh, where's the leash? You even took care of his psychotic dog for two days. I have to go, George. They're your family now. There's no place for me. You just take care of the each of these. Don't do it. George. Please. Honey, we're through. It's just been too much for too long. Not like this. Good luck, baby. Started not to come. But you're here. So let's get started. Yeah, I 
can't do it, Mr. McKenna. I can't. Well, it's up to you, E.J. I feel stupid. Well, would you rather feel stupid or be stupid? It's stupid not to try. Come on, man. What are you so afraid of? There's nobody in here but you and me. I feel like a fool. Well, welcome to the human race, because that's how all of us feel at one time or another. Come on, sit down. The man run across the boulevard. Boulevard, that's very good, that's excellent. Come on, let's start again. What? For yourself, EJ. For yourself. But soft. What light do yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. How you doing? Arise, fair son, and kill You think you can give Ethan Jackson a little extra help with his reading? Great. When do we start? Her maid. How about tomorrow? Far more fair than she. What do you got going here? Be not her maid. Final readings for the Shakespeare him. Festival. Her vestal livery is but sick and green. Thank you, Jerome. Who else is in it? Robert, please. Robert Norris is in the finals. Excellent. Do we get to have the festival here? I'm working on it. You know, I've stepped on a lot of toes downtown. This can be no trick. The conference was sadly born. They have the truth of this from Hero. They seem to pity the lady. It seems her affections have their full bent. Love me? Why, well, it must be requited. I hear how I am censured. They say I will bear myself proudly if I perceive the love come from her. If it's possible, they say too you know it's going to be very difficult to get people to come down to this neighborhood. So what about it? Shh. I did never think to marry. I must not seem proud. We're going to have that festival here. Happy are they that hear their detractions and can put them to mending. They say the lady is fair. Tis a truth I can bear them witness. Mr. McKenna, you better get in your office right away. It's none of your business. You, you just don't understand. Well, you better educate me. Because in about two seconds, I'm calling the police department, the county welfare office, and the youth authority. You're going to jail. And I'm going to get someone to take this boy away from you. I'm listening. I beat him because he wouldn't listen to me. I told him not to come to school today, and they helped me with the junk truck. When that's where we belong, no black man's going to make it in the white man's world with no books. The boy's only going to go out there and get hot sick trying. Well, we'll get in here with Mark Rogers' file. Look, Mr. Rogers, don't do to your son what the past has done to you. Let him take his own shot. All right, maybe he won't become president, maybe just a well-paid lawyer, but that's not so bad. Here you are, Mr. McKenna. Thank you. Look at it. A, 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 B, A, A. What you have sitting here is college material. What you have here is one damn fine son. These black hands don't know nothing but work. You, uh, learned something.
Yeah, 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 that'll be fine. Mr. McKenna, do you have time to see a student? Sure. Yeah, 11.15 to be fine. Uh-huh. Uh, Bob, let me get right back to you, okay? Yeah, right back. Hi, Mr. McKenna. Cynthia. Well, come on in, have a seat. I came by to tell you I'm back at Washington. Mark and Miguel have been telling me about all the good things you've been doing. Hope I made the right decision. Well, we still have a long way to go, but I think you'll be a whole lot happier here now. I had a few questions about the scholarship program you started. Mm -hmm. Fire away. What are the requirements to get in? All you have to do is apply. Well, you better get on the class. I tell you what, why don't you stop back by after school? We'll go over the whole financial aid package together. Okay. Mr. McKenna, I hope you understand why I left. I just want to graduate and go to college. I'll be the first person in my family ever to go to college. It's real important to me, Mr. McKenna, and I just don't want to blow it. Well, one day, instead of having a row of buses filled with students wanting to get out of here, we'll have a waiting list filled with students trying to get in. And that'll be because of good students like you. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I better go. I'll be late for class. All right. Morning, Martha Sandra. Morning, Jonah. Take your hat off. We got the Shakespeare Festival. Oh, great. <laughs> McKenna. Yeah? I was just on my way to talk to you. What's the problem now? Everything. Since you came to Washington, almost everything we do has become a problem. Well, obviously, our working styles are a little different, that's all. That's right. Mine's the result of years of experience in the school, while yours is a collection of Mr. idealistic Proctor, fantasies. I don't that... think the stairwell is exactly the place to stage a pedagogical debate. Huh? Fine. And let me get right to the point. I have done everything in my power to have you removed from the school. There's no secret about that. Well, I failed. So I see no alternative for myself but to transfer out of this school. And I have applied for and secured a suitable position. Well, I always hoped you'd get to see things my way. No. No, I'll never see things your way. So if you don't mind, I'll just pack up and go. Well, can you hang on for a few days? I got a few new teachers coming in. No problem. Mrs. McKenna. Mrs. McKenna, the police are outside now taking somebody down. All right. Good luck. You too. Let's go. What's going on? Crash division. Community resources against street hoodlums. Well, what's he done? Who are you? I'm George McKenna. I'm the principal here. You have to call downtown, Mr. McKenna. All right. I don't have time to fool around with you. I'm late. OK. What's going on, son? Welcome to the Southern California Invitational Shakespeare Festival. We know you have all worked very hard for this moment, and on behalf of George Washington High School, we would like to congratulate you and wish you the best of luck. Mr. McKenna. Be handsome outside.
got his own campus. Yeah, I know, I know. I got people coming from all over the city for this Shakespeare festival, and I got a gang fight brewing in my own backyard. Maybe I better call the police. <sighs> no, no, no. We don't want the police. That's the last thing we want. Why don't you hang tight by the door? I'll try and handle it, all right? I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is often teared with their bones. So let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus hath told you Caesar was ambitious. Be good, Robert, but you would do so, better. it was a grievous fault. Go take your seat with the others. And grievously hath Caesar answered it. Here, under leave of Brutus and the rest, for Brutus is an honorable man, so are they all, all honorable men. Come I to speak in Caesar's funeral. He was my friend, faithful and just to me. And which the brother is called? Don't move. Let it go. Now, where's it going down? Man, I don't know what you're talking I don't want to hear it, son. Where's it going down? I don't know. I asked you a question. Now, where's it going down? Unpitied, like a naked newborn babe, striding the blast or heaven's cherubim, horsed upon the sightless couriers of the air, shall blow the horrible deed in every eye. I'm worried about Rob. Well, you don't have to worry anymore. And our next competitor will be Robert Norris of George Washington High School. Robert? 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 Cowards die many times before their deaths. The valiant never taste of death but once. to disqualify him. Look, come on, give us five more minutes. That's all we need. Look, fellas, we're not gonna start it. But if they start it, we're gonna finish it. Got it? Hey, the man! Hold it. I'm gonna ask you one time. Where's the fight going down? I ain't telling you nothing, man. All right. You say, man, where you taking me, though? Say, hey, man, what have I done? Man, say, why you putting me in man? You're not talking. <laughs> hey, let me out of you, man. You're not I fighting. They ain't no lock me up. Sorry, I'm late. Okay. I'll take a kid like that any day. Why don't you go on the other side? I think you'll see better. Our next competitor will be Robert Norris of George Washington High School. I would like to perform for you uh... Yo, blood. I heard you want to have a conversation with us. What's up? Say, man, action speaks loud and words. What's up? What's down, Yo, man? Yo, I'm doing what? Yo, man. Yo, man. potent, grave, and reverend seniors, my very noble and approved good masters. Shut up! Just be quiet for a 
a second and listen to me. Just listen to me. Listen, listen, listen to me. Look, what do you want to do? What do you want to do, huh? You want to kill everybody here? Go for it. Is that what you want to do? Is it? Yeah. All right, what do I have to kill? I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. You want to kill me? We no can't. Go on. Get the two Go Superman. ahead. No, Superman. I ain't just a hero. I ain't no hero. Rude am I in my speech and little blessed with the soft phrase of peace. For since these arms of mine had seven years pipped till now some nine moons wasted, they've used their dearest action in the tinted field. No. Kill me first Rude. because ain't nobody going to die here before right me. Now. Like I said, talk, talk to him, man. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you, to I'm talking to you and I'm talking to you. We can't have it here. I'll catch you on the street. This is what they expect right us to do, all right? This is what they expect us to do. Like a bunch of stupid niggas. Is that what we are? Man. Huh? Man. Have some respect for yourself. Not for me, not for him, not for EJ, mm -hmm. not for those people in that school. I will a round, unvarnished tale deliver of my whole course of love. With drugs, with charm. What conjuration and what mighty magic. For such proceedings I am charged with all. I won his daughter. Now, if you want to be a man, be a real man. Now, come on. Another time. Street. Just a bunch of punks. And in third place, from Highland Park High School, Richard Mayhem. Congratulations. In second place, from Valley High School, Josanne McGibbon. Congratulations. And the first place winner, from Meadowbrook High School, Howard Smith. Well, that concludes this year's festival. Thanks for coming. Let's have a round of applause for all the contestants. can't change my life. So stop trying to help me, man. Don't you realize that if you are convicted, you could go to jail for life? So what, man? I killed a crip. Big deal. Yeah, I killed him. I got even for Kelly. You think them white people care that another gang member is dead? Hell no, man. It's just another nigga they ain't got to arrest. So I'm going to do a few years, and I'll be back on the street. What do you think, it's some kind of vacation? You're 18 years old. What chance do you think you have of surviving in prison? 
Right now, I got a better chance staying alive in prison than I got out there. When I get out, I'm gonna get my respect. Respect? Yeah. I'm going in a soldier, but I'm coming out a captain. Then you go back to the gangs. Just begin to stop dreaming, man. You just don't get out of the game. That's just the way it is. You get involved rather than what happens to them if you do not. We have gotten involved at Washington Preparatory. <laughs> of our teachers, staff, and the parent community support system under the direction of Mrs. Margaret Wright, some of the dreams for Washington Preparatory High School have come true. Attendance is now 90%, and 70% of our graduates have gone on to college in each of the past four years. We now have a waiting list to enter our school. The school stands as a role model for what can be done in all public schools when responsibility is taken by the professionals and the entire community. The triumph of Washington Prep can be shared by all of us.